Eh, whisht. Now the moment you've all been waiting for. But before I announce the names, I'm a bit of a teaser here. Before I announce the names, the teams that are going through to the final round, I'd like to say I've been really, really impressed with all that you've been doing. I congratulate you all for getting this far. So before I name the two going to the finals, give yourselves a big round of applause, please. <laughs> And the two teams going forward into the final round are, drum roll please, everybody. Thank you. Hermitage Primary. I think that must be them over there. And St Mary's. So can I ask you both to come down to the front, please? Can I come to the front, please, to take up your seats for the final, final round? Oh, yes, bring Ted with you. I hope I've got it right this time. It is a teddy bear, not something else. It is a teddy bear, is it? Oh, good. I'm, I'm improving. I'm improving. St Mary's? Oh, they've got a whole zoo with them. What, are you that side? Hermitage, you're there, right? St Mary's, you're over here. Have your animals been breeding up the back? How many have you got here? How many, one, two, how many teddies have you got? Five. And, and, and a, what's this, a parrot? What's the blue thing? It's a French guy. Oh, oh. <laughs> what? what? Just hold it up a wee minute. What's that? French guy. It's what? They've got a name. Pierre. Pierre. <laughs> What's his name? French guy. Oh, he's a French guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's happy with that. Oh, just, just pile them up. Yeah, that's a great idea. Now, now, let's get started. If you're seated comfortably, we'll begin. This round has 20 questions. The first 10 questions go between the two teams. And if a team answers correctly, you get a point. If you don't answer, yes? We're coming to that. I'm keeping that in hand for you. We practice. Um, so the questions go between the two teams. So I'll ask you a question. You get it wrong. It moves to the next, the other team. And if you get it right, you get a bonus point. That will be followed by 10 buzzer questions. So 10 without the buzzer, 10 with the buzzer. And I'll monitor the amount of time allowed to, the answers, uh, to get the questions. The answers to questions is sure you don't get it's fair. Per Johansson will keep the scores. Now, you've got to choose a speaker from your team who's going to give the answer. Have you chosen something? Don't make it the French guy. Who's going to do it? What's your name? Kean. Keith. Kean. Kean. Ian. Kieran. Yeah. Kieran, I'll get it. And who's going to answer for you? Aiden. Aiden. Aiden and Kieran, right. Now, I think what we have to do, first of all, is test the buzzers. Is that correct? That's the next round. That's the next round. Well, we'll leave that till we come to it. Don't worry about it, because I don't know what I'm doing either. But we'll get there together. Right. Team A, Hermitage. Your team A and your team B. So I'm going to team A first. First question. The music streaming app Spotify is from which country? Aidan, have you got an answer? Can I pass it to Kieran? Sweden. It is. That's one point to you. Team B, your own question. Supercell, the developer of Clash of Clans, is from which country? Germany. No, that's not correct. Finland, correct. One point to you. Back to your own question. Yeah, give them a wee clap to get them started. <laughs> question two. Three, back to team A. Which principality is located between Austria and Switzerland? Liechtenstein is correct. One point to you. Team B, your question. The Caribbean island of Martinique belongs to which EU country? France. Correct. One point to you. Team A. 
Which Formula One driver was world champion in 2018? Lewis Hamilton. Correct. Team B, which distance runner won Olympic gold medals in 2012 and 2016 in both the 5,000 and 10,000 metres? Mo Farah. Correct. Team A, which Germanic people established kingdoms in Spain and Italy during the Middle Ages? Which Germanic people established kingdoms in Spain and Italy during the Middle Ages? British. No, I pass that to Team B. Quickly. No. no. An answer? No. No, right, we passed that one. It was the Goths. Team B, which great empire did the writers Cicero and Virgil come from? It's your one, Team B. It's your question. Oh, Roman. Correct. Team A, painter Salvador Dali. Team A, painter Salvador Dali was from which country? Spain. Correct. Team B, painter Gustav Klimt was from which country? Gustav Klimt. Netherlands? No. Team A, team A, do you know? Germany? No, it was Austria. Now we're moving on to the buzzer questions. This is what you've been looking forward to, huh? Pressing buzzers. Each question will be asked to both teams at the same time will be answered by the first team to buzz. A correct answer wins the point. If the answer is wrong, incorrect, the question will be passed to the other team for a possible bonus point. Once you press the buzzer, you must answer the question immediately. There's no conferring with your teammates once the buzzer has been pressed. You could talk before, but you can't do it once you've pressed. You get the answer right away. So if you want to confer, you have to do it before you press the buzzer. If the answer is incorrect, be passed over to the other team who may be confer before answering. Now, let's have a wee shot at these wonderful buzzers. Let's have a go. Are you getting, are you getting to press it, are you? The, have a go at it, Hermitage. Let's hear it. Oh, and could we hear your one? Oh, you've got to wait till that. Oh, wait till like. Oh, yes. I believe if they're both, they can't both go on at the same time. So we'll just do it again so I get it right. Let's have it again. Anyway, it's fun. <laughs> oh, yes. So we could do that all day, but we're not allowed to. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here we go. Ready? As they say on University Challenge, I've always wanted to do this. Please look out, BBC. I'm looking for a job. Question 11. What is the capital of Iceland? Yes, it is. Question 12. Gdansk and Lublin are cities in which European country? Slovenia. No, pass it over. Could you say the question again? Which countries, uh, Gdansk and Lublin, are cities in which European country? Czech Republic? No, Poland. Question 13. What is the official language of Mozambique? No. Quickly. Spanish? No, Portuguese. Which Shakespearean play is set in Denmark? It is. In which, question 15, which European country has won more Olympic medals at the Winter Olympic Games than any other? Norway. It is. Bavaria is part of which, sorry, we'll wait till the, like, Bavaria is part of which, <laughs> a part of which country? Germany. It is. Which is the smallest member state in the EU? No. It is. Deep breath, right? Here we go. Question 18. Who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia? No, you've not answered right away. Take your time, you can answer this one. The Chronicles of Narnia. Chronicles of Narnia. Don't know. C.S. Lewis. Question 19. Frédéric Chopin was a composer from which country? Poland. Correct. Question 20. 
How many local authorities does Scotland have? No, you're not. You're thinking as you've pressed. Not a bad idea. 32 is correct. That's the last question. And what I'm waiting for now is, can I ask you to remain in your seats while we verify the scores? But you can all have a wee chat again. All to give a big round of applause for our finalists. That was tough. That was tough. Well done. We'll now present the prizes to the top three teams. It gave great pleasure to, invent John, to invite John Mulgrew, OBE, Chair of the Scottish European Education Trust, and Sir David Edward, Patron, Scottish European Educational Trust, to join me to present the medals and trophy. If you join me, please, gentlemen. Thank you very much. In third place, we have Fort Hill School. Please come to the front to collect your medals and prizes. Fort Hill. <laughs> yes, the other side. Oh, they're coming here. There you are. There you are. Yeah. And you get a medal. <laughs> <laughs> a tangled, a tangled man. Yeah, yeah, I have to remember I'm wired the whole time. I have to watch what I'm saying now. <laughs> and more applause, I think, for Port Hill. Well. Oh, there we are. You're supposed to be smiling. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. I'll leave you on that side. It's easier. It's easier, isn't it? In second place, drum roll, is Hermitage School. And the overall winner is, of course, St Mary's School. Please come to the front, collect your medals and prizes. And so, 
all this is five times I've won it, so the rest of you, come on, get the game up, eh? Can't have them do it a sixth time. It's an amazing oh. record. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You missed it a lot of them. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. School. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Can I say this has been a truly remarkable, and I think parents and friends and so on and gallery, it's been a great and enjoyable afternoon. I congratulate the teams on taking part in this enjoyable event. I'll find out what Mr. MacArthur's score was afterwards, and I'll let you know, because he's <laughs> keeping it secret. Oh, he's got it on something electronic. Mm, can easily delete that. I'd now like to ask John Mulgrew to come to the lectern to give a vote of thanks. Mr. Mulgrew, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. So well done to all the pupils participating. And that is a unique record that uh, St. Mary's have won it again. St. Mary's is from Dentalker, which is uh, a little community just outside Glasgow. So I'm really, really pleased to see you winning that. I've got a list of uh, organizations and people that we have, to, we have to thank on behalf of the Scottish Educational, European Educational Trust. I would like to say first, thank you to the government, the Scottish government, for giving us the use of this, this building. It makes the event coming here, and we're very, very grateful to you. And we're also very grateful to the government for a significant financial input to the Euroquiz this year. Almost without that financial input, we wouldn't be here. So thank you, and also thank you to our presiding, deputy presiding officer, but our presiding officer this afternoon, Christine Graham. She's really handled that very, very well. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> and Pear, again, excellent, um, in the role that he, that he played. It's good to have your support and the support of the European Parliament. Um, thank you. Oh, this year we had all 32 education authorities participating. Isn't that good news? And we're really welcoming from the Isles, welcoming primary schools that have come from the Scottish Isles. 2,000 pupils have been involved this year. That's, that's a record number as well. And over 470 schools have participated in the heats. So when you think of the impact that we're making across Scotland, for those of us and for my colleague trustees, it's a really very satisfying. In addition to the Scottish Government for their support, we have to thank the Ganicky Trust, Highland Spring Water, and Tunnocks, known for their beautiful cakes. Personal thanks go to a number of people. I want to highlight, if I could see her, Agostina. Where is Agostina? There she is there. Agostina set all the questions. So whether you liked them or whether you didn't, great achievement to prepare all our questions this afternoon. Thank you, Agostina. And sadly, Agostina tells me that she's leaving Scotland on Wednesday of this week. She's been here from um, her native country and been with us, and we've been delighted to have her, and been delighted that she's been working with the, with the Trez Trust. So good luck to you. I also want to thank um, Jane, sitting over here. She can stand up. James, James organizes it. Every detail, and I do mean detail, is organized by 
Jane, and I'm very grateful to her. And also to Madeline, who's somewhere up the back as well. Um, oh, there she is. There's Madeline up the back. So they, they do all the hard work in getting this ready. They work with us as trustees, and I want to say thank you to them. It's been a great afternoon. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I wouldn't have cared to have declared my score, Sir David. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for coming, parents and the gallery and sponsors. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Can I ask Sir David Edward um, to say a few remarks as well, please? Thank you. And can I first of all uh, add a word of thanks to John and the other trustees for making this possible? It wouldn't be possible without the work of the trustees and of the staff of Scottish Educational Trust. Now, it seems to me, and I always feel this, that this demonstrates why we should be proud of Scotland. I am proud of you. You should be proud of yourselves. And it, it, I'm confident when you see the extraordinary width of knowledge that you show in this quiz that Scotland has a very bright future because of you. So think about yourselves and be proud of yourselves and be proud of uh, your country. Also be proud, it's not easy sometimes, but be proud of Europe, be proud of being part of this extraordinary continent. The questions showed the enormous width of uh, knowledge, experience, language, history that Europe has, and you can be proud of being part of it. So I congratulate you all, and I also particularly congratulate your teachers, because I think the teachers make all this possible. So a big round of applause for your teachers. Also, parents, of whom I'm sure there are many here, a round of applause for them, the support they give you. And again, thank you, Christine, for presiding so well. Thank you, Per, for your help in organizing it. And I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you. That's just about it. Can I say we've participants in here uh, from the borders to the Orkney Islands. If there's anybody from Shetland, anybody from Shetland? I might miss Shetland and the or Shetland and the Orkney Islands, right down to Scottish borders. So across the whole width, uh, length and breadth of Scotland. Well done, all of you. Now I hope you've all enjoyed this and all the stress is off now and you've had fun. But could I ask you all if you would join me in the steps of the garden lobby for a photograph? That's all the schools and the teachers. If you make your way out of the chamber to the back, the events assistants will show you way down to the garden lobby. Remember, take all your belongings with you. If you don't, they'll get blown up and you'll never get them back. That's not true, but I just say that every year because one day it may happen. Uh, remember to take that lovely lit up. I don't know how she's managed it at Fort Hill Primary, but there should be. I want to introduce a prize for the maddest mascot that comes in here. What have I said? We could be in trouble next year. Uh, certificates and goodie bags will be handed out to all of you as you leave the building. So if you leave, go to the back, go down to the garden lobby, take your bags, take the donkey that looks like a rabbit with you. Thank you very much.